Hi there and welcome to Lorena's Labyrinth. Today I'm going to share with you information and my understanding of the angelic kingdom. Now please be aware, in regard to the information that I share, it's really quite limited and as with a lot of stuff that I do, it, it's superficial. It's to open the door for your own explorations. Now in regard to angelology, if that's a term you're not familiar with, it's actually a field of the study of the angels and I did a little bit of research on it because I thought, oh, if I can tell you a bit about that, you'll understand why. Anything that I will be saying, I'm just touching on it. Um, angelology is a theology that has been in practice since at least the early 1200s, I believe. So you're looking at um, nearly a thousand years ago, people have been looking and wanting to know more about um the magic of angels if you say or getting an understanding of the angelic hierarchy and that so nothing that i'll be sharing with you in regard to the content is going to be or or you couldn't consider to be expert is where i'm going i'm simply sharing with you my personal learnings and my personal understandings based on my practice and based on information that i've got from other people somewhere along the way sometimes books and it resonates with me to some level so i think that's probably all i can add to here oh only that if you do start doing your own research and that what i find is that there seems to be conflicting information this stuff of what's true for one person isn't necessarily true for the other person and quite often it's put up as though it's categoric and a factual truth now from my perspective truth is when it comes to this truth is personal and my understanding also includes that a lot of the time when we're given angelic messages we're actually given them for ourselves we're not given them for everybody else and that could account for the variations and the only real way that we will know what is true for ourselves or how we should be working with angels is actually to reflect ourselves and to ask the questions and get a feeling for what is right and wrong um, I would suggest that although I'm not putting up the guardian angel stuff immediately but one of the best ways that we can actually do this is to uh, connect and link to your guardian angel if you want to have that personal connection um, guardian angels will help you uh, as far as establishing what your divine purpose is and your divine path and they we're able to draw upon their healing power um, to support us to identify any of block of the blocks and barriers that might be preventing us from receiving their divine love and that includes bringing to conscious awareness um, any old habits any beliefs that we might have that are stopping us from progressing and the other important thing with angels is that basically it's our feelings they are the most important role as far as recognizing our thoughts of limitation because in my experience angels don't usually communicate clear audiently um, that is through a voice um, usually the communication is done on a telepathic level and when it's from the angels it comes via the heart chakra uh, anyway when you do start connecting with angels or angelary um, energy you can do so with rituals and that kind of thing um, and i'll be putting a video up on how you can tap into the ritual and ceremony aspect and raise the energy so that you can um yeah basically develop your own personal awareness and consciousness anyway i shall crack on so what remains undisputed between the academics of angelology if you like is that there is an angelic kingdom and that the angels are required to adhere to what is called spiritual law now these laws um, also become the codes of conduct that they work by if you like um, and a code of conduct for how we interact with them as well and this is actually outlined in some of the content that i'm loading on universal law um, you might want to brief through that but anyway going back to this within the kingdom um, i'm really simplifying this here okay if we were looking at a food chain or an org chart of a business okay it's governed at the top by the supreme power the creator god goddess whatever you want to call this supreme entity the creator force um god by one name just yeah some people call it the great i am whatever anyway so that person spirit sits at the top um and then 
you have all the other angels beneath them. So when we say that we're within, um, divinely aligned, we're actually aligning our energy, or this is what we're striving to, to vibrate at the same level of the supreme being, the creator, the God. Now, just a background here, when it comes to the angels, they are vibrating at the highest level. So sometimes, before I was aware that I knew that I was calling on angels, I used to call on beings of light and love of the highest vib vibration to raise my light levels to the maximum that I could carry. This is how I used to word it back in the day. But anyway, I hope I'm giving you a little bit of background here that's useful. I must admit um, that this concept a little bit in some ways was what I struggled with when I first started trying to connect to them. Um, just because it definitely does sound too out there, I know. Anyway, going back to this, um, the energy is that of all knowingness. Um, everything that is and everything is not so it's complex yet simple so from my perspective this is how i operate is i'm very comfortable certainly these days with the concepts of a creator that is um, a paternal type figure but that this paternal figure has a feminine aspect because of the laws of duality and polarity and stuff like that so i see them embodied um, but obviously not embodied because they're not on the physical earth plane with a tangible body. But an embodiment is kind of a good description of both the masculine and the feminine. Now, this could be because I grew up in the Catholic Church. I was raised Catholic. Um, maybe that's why, because not everybody has the same view. I know this, that a lot of people that work with angels, they hold a different perspective to what I do. But the, that's not important. The important thing is how you make that connection and how it has meaning to you um, because some people just see the creator as just being this great big enormous unlimited body of light which actually i do too so anyway the point is that the kingdom consists of millions of angels and each angel has a specific task as i said before there is a hierarchy there's an angelic order and a structure to this to ensure that there is no chaos at this level each angel also has a divine plan and they also have what is called a twin flame we'll have conversations about that in the future anyway my understanding is that the angelic purpose is to support each one of us as humans to remember who and what we are where we came from and this involves an awakening or a reawakening or a remembrance just for different words of the God eternal self and to draw upon this divine energy of love so that we can help others to remember their purpose as well and to actually allow ourselves to feel this love and I say feel with capital letters at a cellular level now the way that they do this I'm talking about the angels um, is basically delivered with they've got areas of expertise you know so if you had a corporate business structure you'd um, you know, certainly, I'll say corporate, let's say it's a mind side or whatever, because that's the first thing I can think of. You've got your projects manager who does the planning for the future. You've got your um, coordinator, what do they call that? Transport or something like that. They oversee different areas to ensure the smooth running and flow of the business. And I guess they're in the business of love, if you like. Um, they are not permitted to intervene in our lives um, unless we directly request them. We have to invite them into our lives because that is part of the spiritual law for them. And the other thing is when we call or invoke or ask them to intervene, um, anything that involves bringing harm to yourself, to myself, um, to other people, even if it's indirectly or inadvertent, um, the angels will not intervene because actually they cannot under spiritual law that would then um, bring incur negative karma to them as well so they're bound by karma um, they're also not allowed to make the decisions for us you know quite often as a reader or consultant or whatever I'd have people turn up you know basically throwing the balls in the air saying I don't know what to do tell me what I've got to do that's not how it happens you make a choice and then you get supported in the decision that you make because if it ends up being and we use quotation marks the wrong choice we don't call that wrong we call it a miss turn or a miss take and you can have another shot at it okay 
And the reason that they can't tell you what decisions to make is because this is about offering new experiences to learn and grow from. Um, and that interferes, if somebody was to tell you what to do, that interferes with your decision making and your independence as well. So if I was to talk rationally on a mental health perspective, it would be like, this is not part of the angelic studies. This is just how I relate it. Um, if I tell somebody you need to do X and Y and it turns foul and it ends up being an experience that they really don't want, instead of taking responsibility for their actions, they can blame other people for it. It's not my fault. I didn't do it. Those person made me do it or I only did it because so-and-so said that I should. That's not about um, taking responsibility for your actions and it doesn't help a person to learn. So um, I think that might be part of it, just speculating. For now, though, what we'll focus on is the fact that within the angelic kingdom and this hierarchy, the archangels play a very important role for humanity. And with all the angels, there is no room for ego and puffery. Uh, they recognise, the angels already recognise that we are all part of the one and each one of us is part of the all. So try and think on that if that doesn't make sense to you. Every single thing, every success, every near miss is a shared activity or result. And there is this understanding that what we do to one, we do to all and we do to ourselves. Uh, so we'll be talking more about this when we get to the law of karma in universal law. But the bottom line is we all have a guardian angel who is allocated to us at the point of creation. And this angel has been with us across all of our lifetimes. Uh, I want you to remember and take this forward with you or I choose to remind you that angelic energy is not sombre. It is not this, um, you know, crawling into a temple on your knees and that's no disrespect to anybody else. Um, I do, in fairness, I think there might be some of that, but that's a willing thing. That's not um, a demand or a command. I think if you want to drop to your knees because you're so awestruck, um, so be it. But I don't think there's a requirement for that because angels are above this ego aspect. Um, anyway, your angel will never ever abandon you, um, although I will admit, based on my own experience, there have been a few times throughout my life that even after my connection I questioned if I had been abandoned and I can assure you that I was not. Um, for some reason I became particularly overwhelmed, I had a lot coming at me from life. Um, in great torrents of emotional challenges, shall we say. And when we are in those kind of situations and we don't create this space to do the angel connection, then we start to feel detached and abandoned. And, you know, later on when you're through the crisis and you look back, I can honestly turn around and say, you know, thank God, I can see at different points in my life where the universe was actually carrying me on its back to get through to the next stage. So before we go any further, there's something that we need to look at, which is how you would identify if an angel has presented to you. Um, so angels can be either white light or golden light. And what we mean by this is that their auras are either the brilliant white or a brilliant gold. Now, I recommend uh, that you take some time out in the future just to test this theory because you can establish, this is just how I worked out what mine was. Um, if you attempt to just sit there quietly and close your eyes and think about do you see the color white behind your eyelids try and hold it right some people will see the white come in and it becomes a flicker or, or the gold okay the one that you can hold with the greatest ease for the longest period of time my theory my personal belief is that this is the order that your angel um your guardian angel is so um if you hold white light easier than gold, then you can pretty well guarantee that you've got a, a white light angel. And if you struggle to sustain holding the white light image behind your eyes, then it's most likely that you've got a golden light. Now I say, um, once again, that that viewpoint of mine is not a categoric truth. And this is because not all people are good at imagining things or seeing things in their mind or trying to see things. So it might be something if you are the type of person that can't visualize anything. If somebody says, can you imagine, you know, we'll picture this and you go, no, no, I really can't. 
okay well then you're obviously not a visual person so for you to try and visualize that becomes an area of personal development for you to try and build your imagery or capacity to visualize then as you build your capacity then you can establish what color comes to you with ease um, I guess the next thing to remind you is that the angelic aura it tends to be very tall now from what I understand it's at least six foot so some people might turn around and go like well six foot's not tall I think it's at least six foot probably six and a half but it can range I believe up to about um, 12 foot I mean it could even be more you know I'm just sort of throwing some stuff out here um, but the aura itself where the human aura is sort of egg shaped the angelic aura tends to be um, more elongated if you know what I mean it's a bit longer it's it's still ovalish it's got the rounded top and bottom but it's stretched out longer and it has these little wings coming out from the side not feathery wings uh, but some people may see angels with feathery wings and for me because I struggled um, identifying auras obviously I've said before I asked that the angels manifest with bird-like wings when trying to communicate with me they're also um, as far as this aura goes you don't always everybody's different like I say I just want to be clear here too I don't see angels every time I do a reading with a person okay I see them often enough to not doubt the process now when I have seen angels sometimes I've seen them um, not so much um, as this aura outline more like this blasting flash of really brilliant light um, and I, I won't go too far into it now because I'll let you see it yourself but the other thing to remember too uh, about angels sorry I'm just thinking as I talk is that light and vibration um, they're basically the same thing if an aura is vibrating at a really high rate that means it's got more and more light coming through it so when we connect with angels their light is actually so um, fast that uh, it was put to me years ago that um, if they yeah, basically be like a sun fry okay so when we interact with them they actually drop their vibration right down and the idea is that when we're channeling we're bringing our vibration our energy right up for the purposes of being able to communicate with them I hope that makes sense if you've got questions write them down somebody else might have an answer for you too the content that I'm sharing with you today in this video I'm relying primarily on stuff that's been put together by Kimberly Maroney and no I'm not being prom uh, paid to promote her products it's just I think that I'd be very remiss if I didn't acknowledge her because I may as well say that although I've never met the woman it's been um, I consider her stuff to be a major teacher to me and also because I'm being a bit lazy I'm taking shortcuts and it's actually easier for me to refer back to a lot of her stuff to deliver it here to you and then just to write down all of my own experiences and if you watch the video on my introduction I was extremely resistant to all concepts of angels and this was the deck that I bought with great resistance great resistance at a time I did not believe in angels nowadays of course I refer to them as my specials I don't use them in the um, process of doing readings for anybody else um, I guess in anything actually these are the ones that I rely on for my ceremony and stuff like that which we'll be talking about when I talk about the angel of blessings because that video is coming up and um, yeah this is the book that I got my original guidance on how to really effectively do a powerful blessing ceremony so this graphical structure is taken def um, directly from Kimberly's book and I decided to use it because it seems to be sensible and it just saves me a lot of um, effort actually now of course when we look at this we think what really is there only 44 angels to do all this stuff for how many millions of people of course not okay um, there are millions of angels millions and millions of them and I'm sure that they have more tasks than what we've got outlined here or more areas of expertise but this would be the primary fundamental basis of the hierarchy and I wanted to include it because you can see down the left hand column you've got all the archangels and then we're looking at an angelic order here 
And in regard to the aura, I'm going to speak about the um, aura, the orders of the angels. I will be speaking to each one of these in the upcoming slides. Um, but my plans for the YouTube channel is actually to, um, to put up content about each of these particular angels and their healing abilities and what you could do to actually draw this the angels with these specific gifts into your aura to help you heal and raise your own vibration. So as far as tasks go, the great archangels, they're responsible for um, anchoring the primary energy that nourishes and guides us on earth. And the mission of all angels, as discussed, is to remember who we are or to support us to remember who we are. And it's important to understand that they pursue their missions. The angels are absolutely dedicated and committed. And it's all underpinned by adoration of the divine, if you like. Um, their primary concern, of course, is to protect and resurrect our spiritual destiny. That is to awaken us. And um, they fulfill their own destiny because, as I said, they've got a d divine plan by charging energy and directing it. Um, so we're talking about archangels here to direct that energy to other angels in the other angelic orders and to pass along the healing energy through actions of ministration and healing. That might be a bit confusing. Just thinking if I can reiterate that a bit better. Okay, their primary task is you've got the archangels, you put in the prayer, you invoke, you say, I need protection. You know, it would be like magic calling out to Archangel Michael, for example, I'm unsafe, I'm in a war zone, I need protection, please wrap me in a bubble of protection, something like that, okay? Archangel Michael, of course, probably, well, I just would doubt, um, you know, I shouldn't say I, I doubt, because actually I believe that sometimes he probably would, okay? But he works with legions, we're going to be talking a little bit more about him in the near future. So when that thought transmits, and we're talking about it happening very quickly, right? The Archangel will pick that thought up and he will respond immediately by sending um, the necessary healing and because everybody is connected via thought and that includes the angels. So it just goes out and it's fulfilled, if that makes sense. So each Archangel would operate in a similar way. We put the thought out, we put the call out and they respond by sending the appropriate angels to us for whatever um, healing that we need. Or whatever energy we need now where it becomes a little bit different where there becomes this confusion if you like with the students of angelology is that people tend to associate the archangels with specific healing colors and specific crystals you know such as what i've got up here um and it can be different depending on the person and a prime example of this is um, Archangel Jophiel. I've seen some people say that he's associated with the crown chakra, um, which would be the colour white, which I've got down on this slide is Gabrielle. I don't think it matters, but I'll explain to you why. For me, when I think of uh, Jophiel and creative power, I tend to associate him with the yellow chakra because um, power is, it sits in your um, solar plexus chakra. So I associate him with that. But everybody's different, and I believe that they can actually be a little bit interchangeable. I mean, of course, I'm interested to hear what you've got to say and what your experiences are. Raphael is some, sometimes associated with the colour purple as opposed to green. Shamuel always is associated with pink. You know, just stuff like that. But there is variations. And then the other thing too that I find, or I did find a little confusing when I first got into this, was that we didn't seem to have an archangel over the red chakra, um, which of course is your base survival stuff. But I guess in a way, if you think about it, um, that is actually governed and protected through Archangel Michael and also through Uriel who works with the, um, yellow, with the orange chakra. So perhaps there's a bit of a flow over there. So when I think of the lesser archangels, I guess because of their association with circle dancing, I immediately think of the groups of the whirling dervishes. I think that's how you pronounce that word. Um, anyway, the lesser archangels have a smaller aura than the archangels, which actually have the largest form of angelic aura. 
Um, they are far more abundant and they are associated with the emotions of joy, music, relationships, thought and purity. Now here you can see the name of some of the lesser angels and the roles that they serve to humanity. Now you can call on them directly through invocation and for the purposes outlined here. Of course, I'll be doing videos on each one of the angels that I name in this video. Um, so as an example, Israfel is the angel of music. So musicians and creators would be encouraged to call upon Israfel um, and through the divine to create beautiful music to uplift the soul. Others who are not musicians might call upon Israfel to direct them to music that can uplift their soul and assist them to maintain an energy of love and kindness within themselves that they can extend to others. I mean, these are just thoughts on how you might do it. Um, so first order heart angels, my goodness me, they are absolutely amazing. Um, in Kimberly's book, she says that you can distinguish them because they have their arms reaching outward toward you. Um, now, of course, this depends on how you visualize, right? Now, if, once again, if I'm honest, I do remember my very first angelic experience and I didn't realize that what it is what it was. What I actually, I did see them coming to me with their arms outstretched. And um, we do instinctively respond to these loving feelings, you know, because, it, oh my goodness, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, there's, I, look, Sometimes I see them with pink and green glitter, glittery light, um, sometimes both, or I have done in the past. Um, but at the end of the day, I think whatever you might see, it's go by the feelings um, because their role does include receiving the vision of the eternal and projecting it out to others. Guardian angels, uh, their role is to, um, well, goodness me, Oh, look, actually, just trying to talk about this just throws me into a space of um, silence. Okay, guardian angels, they have this amazing desire to care for others, and it's combined with a deep gratitude. Um, actually, I have to pause to actually get a grip back here because I, I absolutely love my guardian angel. All right, so that was a big breath. Okay, so guardian angels they are filled with love for obviously the person that they're guarding um this love is completely unconditional um there is nothing you or i could ever do to stop them loving us and being uh, concerned for us and once we have developed that connection and we can actually see them respond i mean there have been some times in my life when i've made some massive really poor decisions well i thought they were poor decisions um i have a little bit of fire in me and i might have actually said something a bit fiery and and had that moment to live where you actually want to rip your tongue out your mouth yourself and you're so cross with yourself that you actually said and did x and y and you know it's, it's associated with hang dog shame and um i actually feel that it those times that I've actually seen, well, some of those times, not all of them, where I've seen my um, support team, if you like, looking at each other going, oh my God, she's so cute when she gets angry, isn't she? But, oh dear, she's going to pay the price for that, you know, um, but they're sympathetic, you know, um, it's just, all I can say is it's beautiful. Even if we um, stuff up, they're there, they'll help us to try and overcome whatever obstacles we create for ourselves. So that's all part of the learning. Um, I will put up these videos on connecting and making your own personalised connection with your guardian in the future. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that um, because I'm still toying with that in my own mind as to, uh, and actually I'm not just toying with it, I really want to actually spend some time reflecting in meditation with this and connect with my own guides because not because I'm concerned and I don't want to share this information with you because I believe it's important for all of us. What I am concerned about is that when we look at social media and we've got AI and all of this kind of stuff and there's a lot of mentally unwell people, I have to spend some time thinking and reflecting about if I put this information up there publicly, you know, is some charlatan, because there's so many of them, charlatan or exploit are going to grab a hold of this content um, and use it in different ways. So I need to yeah, spend some time reflecting on how I'm going to deliver it to you. 
So I'll just briefly outline um, some of these other roles. You know, when we talk about Uni and we're talking about asking her to help us rise above problems and to open our heart more fully to extending gratitude and appreciation, that's about developing a more positive attitude. Um, you might want to, you'll get advice. You might feel drawn. Um, even if you don't hear the words, you might suddenly find yourself doing things like creating a gratitude journal or spending time in prayer. Um, many people often ask to have, you know, oh, I want more romance, I want my divine partner. I mean, goodness me, you've got no idea how many times we hear that when we do readings. Um, anyway, partnership, romantic or otherwise, is the area of expertise for Soaked Hosey. Um, but be aware that you can have twin flames and soulmates that aren't romantic. They might come in as a business partner. Um, Hadranial... Oh, yeah, that's that's love. That's more love. Opening your heart to the giving and receiving of love. Um, Pashar, of course, he's involved in the um, creation of miracles, just so you know. That's teamwork. Anyway, moving on to the next slide. I was just thinking as I collected myself in between slides that when it comes to identifying the integrity of a person, a spiritual teacher or whatever, a lot of the time it's actually in, uh, I think the defining quality is if they are attempting to foster dependence on you for your own well-being. Um, and this would be the same as anybody that is uh, claiming to work with angels. If they turn around and tell you that you need to see them because you need to receive X or Y treatments, whether or not there's a price tag attached to it, that's a pretty clear example that what they're doing is attempting to uh, create dependency from you onto them. And it could be ego-based or it could be financial-based. But either way, if that's what they're doing, um, you can just withdraw gracefully from that situation and it doesn't need to be nasty. But anyway, in regard to the second order manifesting angels, um, they tend to put their focus on how the inner beauty or the inner desires are manifested. And that means bringing the divine idea. So it's important if it's a divinely inspired idea where you've been thinking of doing or creating something and you feel compelled, it's like it's your pathway, it's your journey. Well, they will bring that um, idea to the surface. Okay, so that's... Uh, called the divine expression. So as an example, on a very uh, simple type basis, if you find that you feel that you behave aggressively toward others and it's a trait about yourself that um, you don't know why you do it and you don't know where the anger came from, they can help you to manage your emotional reactions. Um, and to be the person that you desire to be. So if within your heart you're wanting to be this more peaceful person, which this is a really good thing to be doing anyway, um, you call upon them and you visualise yourself peacefully negotiating and resolving conflict, okay? Whatever it is that you're visualising, they refine that vision and then they project the vision into the heart angels and the heart, the heart angels will focus on the details and they add vividness to the vision um, and they bring it to life. So the second order manifesting orders, um, their aura is more defined and it has more gold in it than the other angels. Uh, sometimes the other angel auras can present in a bit of a wispy way, but whether they're looking wispy everything that they touch just becomes more beautiful and more lovely. Um, what else can I give you here? The second order manifesting angels, they help us to develop the truth and the knowledge for us and to be able to communicate and express what we know. So as I do this activity for you, I recall when I was looking at the universal years all those years ago, and I'd forgotten about this. I had actively been attempting to manifest a deeper understanding and insight into universal wisdom. This was back in the day. And I understood that there was an angel called Raziel um, and that Raziel has what is called a book of knowledge. This is a story for another day. 
Um, anyway, that's how that manifested. Obviously, I received a copy of the Universal Laws for me to explore and try and process and bring to light my own knowledge and understanding and expand upon it. And of course, once again, I've, I'm revisiting this at, um, activity by putting the content up on the channel for you to have a look at. If we were talking about a relationship conflict where there's a breakdown or a barrier where, you know, a person's hanging up, I'm never going to speak to you again or whatever, or they simply ghost you um, because their feelings are hurt and they don't know how to speak to you or vice versa, you can call upon Onkanon so that you can express your true feelings and emotions in peaceful ways. Um, people that have a an attraction to beauty, shall we say, to creating beauty in their surroundings. Um, you will know this if they're connected to beauty angels because they actually don't have a cluttered house. They like, well, I shouldn't say that because, you know, if they're repressing it, they may have a cluttered house, okay? But um, generally speaking, when they're living upright, their house shines, shines, shines. Either way, I will go into um, the angelic qualities more specifically when I do the videos on each one of these angels in the future. So the third order inner angels, they're a bit of an interesting mob because um, their primary task is to work with feelings of passion and um, to direct and drive manifestations. Now, passion is associated with fire, so these angels are associated with uh, fire which is why I've got this in the image here um, a lot of people this is actually this is one of the reasons why I say to people you know anger is not a bad emotion okay people go like oh my god they're angry you know they can't be enlightened or they can't be good people because they've got anger and anger is a negative emotion it's not anger that is the negative problem here it is how we direct that anger and you will know that if you get angry enough yourself you can move mountains very quickly and this is because anger is passion so it's you feel the anger but you don't project it onto anyone you don't attack anybody with it you just project and drive this anger into positive pursuits so it would be get active get busy if you're angry about something change it make the changes and if you draw on that energy of passion those changes will happen quickly and if you're feeling that you have um that you've lost your passion that you've got no driving in a force or whatever these are the ones that you call upon right nathaniel first one transform um those feelings of void or nothingness you know to bring back passion into your life Gelgali, um is the angel that helps you to bring more light into your aura the shekinah is the one that connects your mind body and spirit and strengthens um, your connection to the eternal self the divine creator um, through yeah through unity as i say i'm going to go into these um, angels further in the future zag zagel um, the idea of drawing upon his I say his because it sounds masculine. We all know they've got no gender, but whatever. Okay, drawing upon his wisdom um, would be that inner seeing and hearing. And that can be the responding to the emotions within yourself. You know, all of that repressed stuff that's buried down, bringing the subconscious to the conscious. Now, the other thing I think I will point out, because based on my own personal experiences, um, these angels are definitely... Um, they come across quite, at a glance, serious. On a polite level, quiet and deeply introspective is what Kimberly refers to them as. Um, I obviously had made a connection with them at some point in time, which I don't want to talk about here. And I found them to be a little bit scary, but that was my own stuff. Um, and it wasn't about them being scary. I just want to clarify this here. This is because they have an intensity about them and because they're so focused on their purpose and task because they're just so dedicated to it is that it's easy for us to misunderstand that intensity as a somberness or um, I can't even think of the word. But let's say I learned, all right? I learned that they are not um, so focused that they can't appreciate humour and that they can't have a laugh um, and 
they are just so incredibly loving. Look, all angels are incredibly loving. That's why I say when when I saw them and felt that they were a bit scary, that was my stuff. Okay, that was absolutely my stuff and my own fears. But the bottom line is, these people they are. I say people because hey, we're all spirits. We're all people. Um, they are very passionate and they're very intense um, around helping us to help ourselves. And I think that's the beauty of connecting with them. Um, so yeah, just to state, other angels might come across as being very playful and joyous. These ones come across as very intense. Um, they're there for a purpose. And um, that's about all I can say about them. I'll speak to them more when I do the individual videos. Just remember, fire is passion. So when we talk about the fourth order mother's angels, we're talking about um, the manifestation of um, maternal type love, if you like. Now, when we talk about the angel Charmian, she is the manifestation of mother love, um, the birth of duality and our self-worth. So emotions, as I've stated before, they're essential to propel all of our creations into existence. Now, when we're trying to manifest, Micah um, supports our manifestations by guiding us to our divine plan through feelings. You know, that feeling, is this right for me? Um, I feel guided to do, actually a prime example of this is, I felt guided to do the Realm Spiritual Advisors. But the point is, I might have felt guided to do that, but the timing was out. I believe the timing was out. Um, and that could have been because I approached it at the wrong time, or it just could have been that um, energy changed and it then became not the right time. I don't know. But anyway, Remliel is the other angel, and he uh, his role is to assist us to awaken to our inner desires. And we work out what our inner desires are by going into the depths of our emotions, you know, really feeling what feels right, what feels wrong, what fit makes us feel happy, what, um, where do we feel that we're going to get greater peace or whatever. Uziel, of course, is the faith angel and he helps to restore faith. Just thinking about this, this is when doubt consumes us and when we feel separated, alone and isolated or whatever, that can be a crisis of faith. So Uziel will help to overcome that crisis and any sensations of being separate or that the divine doesn't care about us or whatever. Now, going back to divine maternal love, this is about absolute compassion. Um, like a perfect human mother, she can be described as holding us in her arms, kissing away our tears, you know, if you've got a small child, striking the wounds and encouraging us to basically to find ourselves and find our rightful place on the path that we walk. Um, I associate mother love with, which is why I've actually had this image created here, with this beautiful powder blue colour. Of course, it might be different for you. And the other interesting little fact here is I associate Uziel, the angel of faith, with yellow and the yellow chakra. And then again, when we talk about Remliel, I associate him with white, if you don't mind, and mica with the colours of electric blue. If you've got different experiences here, I am, I'd love to hear how it happens for you. I'm sure other people would too. So my understanding with the seraphim angels is that uh, where the other angels can present as either masculine or feminine, you know, because some people, I, actually I've spoken to some people, they see Shamuel as a female presenting to them as in female form. I see Shamuel presenting in a masculine form, each to their own, okay? But the difference with the seraphim is that they always present in the masculine form. Um, what can I say about them? They tend to manifest in bright colours, not the pastels, and they pay attention to, once again, to every minute detail in the work that they do. They're quite often associated with ceremonies such as blessings, prosperity, and artistic or entertaining events. People who feel connected to them 
generally might exhibit the attributes of a survivor. They've been to hell and back, you might as well say, on the earth plane, um, but they still manage to hold on to a joy and love of life. They, It's kind of like, I've been to hell and back, but you know what, thank God, I'm blessed, I'm here today, you know? Um, however, joy, as joyful as they are, joy can, I wouldn't say be extinguished, but it can be overcome um, or diminished by, is a better word, by suffering and sacrifice. So the seraphim are very powerful um, and people that are associated with the seraphim can be quite fearful of stepping into their own power and allowing themselves to become a powerful person. Um, and so they would be encouraged to release the fear of being powerful and to step back up, take back their personal power and use it for the greater good of humanity. And the advice to these people would be, you know, open your heart, open your heart to your inner guidance and rediscover um, freedom from any guilt that they may carry because they may feel, um, or I say may, they most likely feel guilty at the thought of becoming a powerful person. So just a reminder, when we talk about gender, obviously the angels have no gender. Um, where the seraphim will present as a male, the cherubim tend to present as a female. Um, the cherubim are also very powerful and it is with their energy it's possible to create miracles. Now I'm aware that one of my children has a cherubim guardian angel. I'm not going too far in disclosures here, but um, I had an interesting experience when I was trying to get more information and knowledge about things back in the past. Um, my understandings of the cherubim may be different to other people's because my belief is that they're actually quite small or certainly that's how they manifested um, within my family environment about the size of what we would envisage a cupid actually um, where my daughter is concerned i'm actually going to draw on this experience here because i found it to be fascinating um, just remember children it really is a case of out of the mouths of babes my daughter, one of them, actually all of my children were very blessed as children um, and quite clairvoyant and that kind of stuff. Now the thing is, as adults, because my children are adults now, they will actually deny their gifts. You know, it's all part of life. They can be wide open, but sometimes they can end up denying them. Um, and what they are not necessarily comfortable with is that I can turn around and say to them, but I tested you, you know what I mean? I used to test them just because they said something didn't mean that I was like, oh, well, the kids said that, that must be true. I would actually um, do exercises with them, um, play games with them, like, okay, what am I thinking of, you know? Um, what colour are my eyes? I would hold that as a thought. I wouldn't say it because obviously the kids know the answers. And I would just say things like, you know, okay, I'm holding a thought in my head. What? Tell me the answer, you know? What can you tell me the answer, right? Anyway, I'm not going to go too far into that either. What I will say, I'll come back to the cherubim stuff because I found this to be fascinating. I was pretty sure that my daughter had a cherubim guardian, but I wasn't 100%. And I started researching the angelic orders and hierarchies eons back in the days. And I found a little bit of tidbit that I thought sounded like um, a load of codswallop, actually. And I thought, hmm, I'm going to ask my daughter, but I'll ask her in a way. Now, what I had read was very outlandish, but I knew that if it were true, that my daughter would be able to identify it. So without telling my daughter what I'd read that as being a defining point of the cherubim, I asked her to... Actually, I just answered the, the question. I said, um, how many faces has a cherubim got? Sounds completely outlandish, doesn't it? I bet you're sitting there thinking, like, what? Why would you ask that? Which is exactly what she said. What do you mean, how many faces? I said, just tell me. I said, has she got one face? Looks at you. I said, if she turns left or right, does she have another face? What's going on? Does she have one face? Do you get to look at her on the profile? And um, my daughter was about 12 at the time, and she turned around and went, oh, my God, I've never noticed that before. I said, what's that? She said, she's got three faces. I said, three? And she said, yes. She said she has, and I went, okay, because I thought, well, that's actually based on what I had read on the internet. That was not quite the story. And then I said, so 
you can see three faces when she turns her head and, and she goes, my daughter says yes. And I said, ask her, has she got another face? Is there any more faces? I was like, because three's pretty impressive. And my daughter gasped and she said she's just raised her hair and showed me she's got a fourth face. And I was like, oh, okay, now I'm convinced because this is actually what I'd read was that the cherubim angels um, are unique in that they have four faces. And what my daughter described was the placement of the fourth face, which is at the top of the neck. And you know, where your scalp curves, it's kind of, there's a little fourth face in there apparently. Um, that might trip you out. It's just, you can take that, this is the kind of content that I would encourage you as you walk your path and you develop your own wisdom and knowledge. If it sounds like bull dust, or if it sounds far too fantastical for you that you can't swallow, settle aside it's information you don't need right now or it's not necessarily true for you it might be true for me and my daughter and not true for anybody else but this was an experience that we had okay um so anyway just quickly okay with the cherubims they're very powerful uh their role of course is to assist in um what have i got here in the creation of miracles, right? So we've got Amara Shire. I'm going to be doing a video because we want to connect with her coming into 2024. Um, this is the time to be doing a blessing ceremony with her. Fortunata, of course, is able to manifest, oh, and I've done that in the past with her, miracles in regard to financial abundance. Ariel, um, we can connect with her in nature. Um, she obviously is really powerful too. And Anankel, or Anankel, if that's how you pronounce her name, um, she's to do with the release of guilt. I probably should do some work with her, actually, for now. I'm carrying a little bit of guilt, I think, that needs to be released, um, because I think it's misplaced, actually. But um, either way, guilt just blocks us down and bogs us down and stops us from being able to draw more light into our aura. So whether or not the guilt is founded, there is uh, self-forgiveness that's associated with things. Um, so that we can increase our own vibration. Anyway, moving along. So golden light angels, they're considered to be balancing angels. Okay, I'll go into that a little bit more, um, but suffice to say, golden light angels are feelings focused. They're very sensitive, okay? That doesn't mean to say that they are emotionally reactive, although they, you know, people that are connected to the golden light angels perhaps that have a guardian angel that's a golden lighter they may be emotionally reactive but if I compare it to stuff that I learned at university I would say that people with a golden light angel tend to be feelings focused which is um, as I say not about having the emotion but because before the emotion comes in there becomes a physiological uh, sensation which is hmm I'm not comfortable right i don't know why i'm uncomfortable um and i'm just giving you a scenario here it could be i pick up there's a lack of authenticity within that person i feel that their words are not aligned with the truth right i feel like they're lying right so it's this feeling it's a bodily sensation it's not an emotion at that point in time that's a sensitivity now, depending on what the feelings are, then they have the emotional reactional response to it. And of course, they I say reactional response because we've got choices. Okay. With the white light angels, it would be potentially the other way. Um, if people are associated with white light, it would be, I think you're a liar, right? If we're using the same scenario, hmm, I think you're a liar. I don't know why I think you're a liar. And then it would be probably having the emotional reaction or response to that where their behavior changes. I think that person's a liar and um, I don't know why. So if they were to process and unpack, it would be, well, what gave you the idea that that person was a liar? Uh, because I just felt there was um, an in incongruity between their, what you would have meant. Then they would unpack why they feel the way they do. So. The golden light angels and the white light angels work with us in different ways. And so now bringing that back to talking about golden light angels, um, 
their task is to shine a light on that stuff that we don't want to see and but to shine that light with a loving sense of compassion so this is why they are very focused on the feelings um what else can i say here about them basically they are extremely good in a crisis um and the people that have a golden light angel, they also will be good in a crisis. As long as they don't allow themselves to become victimized or paralyzed by fear or convert, um, or, yeah, basically, as long as they can convert each experience into an opportunity for growth. Uh, so golden light angels will help us to forgive ourselves for unwanted emotions, um, for unpacking repressed feelings that we've put down pushed down and don't want to face um, because that facing emotions is basically like facing your inner demons and it takes courage to work through some intense emotions and so the whole process here is like yes um, if you're seeking forgiveness if you're feeling fragmented um, if you've got anger and rage uh, dig deep in it ask for um, forgiveness from the divine Kayla Ray, of course, helps to settle these intense emotions. She'll bring in the peace and she's pretty incredible. Her energy is amazing. I want to say when we talk about Ramil and we've got anger and rage there, that's kind of like, well, we have an angel of anger and rage. I've just explained to you before that anger and rage, they're actually passion. OK, and it is not a problem to have anger and rage. They're not negative emotions. These are really high growth emotions that promote um well promote our own escalation of awareness if you like but you've got to be brave to dig into that and the other thing is that as we mature and take responsibility for our own development we recognize that anger and rage is an opportunity for growth and we stop throwing it at people and we start directing it into positive pursuits i recall because i've worked in the mental health field a psychiatrist turning around saying we need to do something about the anger and rage um actually because i was letting rip about psychiatrists to a psychiatrist it was um not very good of me in hindsight but uh i was expressing um my concerns about hypocrisy and i wasn't doing it in a flattering way either way this psychiatrist called me up and just said you sound very angry when you talk like this and i thought well i am actually because they're doing harm to people um the ones that i knew at the time the people aren't all the same and she said, well, what can we do to fix your anger? And I said, I was horrified. I turned around and I said, we don't do anything. I said, we leave my anger at harmful practice in place. I said, because this is my passion. This is my driving force. And this is how I can make social change and address injustice. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not saying that you go out there, you know, with a pair of boxing gloves or whatever, but it's this, I will stand tall and I will use my voice and I will stand up and speak for those people that are vulnerable, but I have to speak, um, I have to speak with kindness. And if I can say that there was something I did, I won't say wrong because I don't like the word of right wrong. Um, if there was something I could have done better that day, it was one, not talk to a psychiatrist when I'm not happy with psychiatrists, even if it was a social connection. And two, perhaps I could have delivered my message in a kinder way using, um, drawing upon, I don't know, any one of the number of angels. But anyway, so golden light angels, I hope I've given you some information there. Just a reminder, we're going to look at each one of these angels individually in future videos. So there you go, my friends. Um, hopefully I've managed to give you some information and insight on the angelic kingdom, the hierarchy, the structures, the purpose in ways that you find meaningful and in ways that seem acceptable or reachable for yourself. Because clearly I hope that I'm demonstrating to you that I am a human being. I'm no saint. And I have always said, if I can do this connection, so can other people, you know, I will over the course of time, put up more videos and reels. Um, specifically around how we can um, fine-tune our connection with the divine and with angels now I will also um, you know what basically I'll stop talking this has been a long video so I will thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart for being part of my journey um, there is an angel I should have mentioned 
within all of these, Mir is the angel of groups and communities. So if you're feeling isolated and alone and you wanted to um, draw people around you that want to pursue their development and raise their vibration as well, you would call upon Mir perhaps, or when you do your blessing ceremony, which I'll give you the tips in a little while, um, you could ask Amarashaya to link you in with Mir to find the community uh, that helps to grow and develop you in positive ways to experience greater light and love, stuff like that. Um, but anyway, for now, I'm going to love you, leave you, and say thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a blessed day. Leave a comment. Glad to have you as part of my journey. Take care. Bye-bye.